Okay, this is the last part of the videos, and it's the same problem that I was doing before. Uh, you have a triangular load on the top, a tri uh, rectangular load at the bottom, and this moment is just the reaction, the support. Be careful because in the two previous uh, videos, I don't know why I left the moment in the other direction. The moment goes in this direction, otherwise it doesn't make sense at the end it wouldn't close in zero the diagram. So this is just a sign error that it happened in the previous video, so be careful with that. Okay, now we have this and we try sections and we try integrals. Now we're going to do the same problem by areas. After defining the discontinuity zones, which in this case is only one, and knowing this is the shear and this is the moment, now comes the method of the areas. Remember this is keep and this is keep fit. And this is the zero because it's the baseline. We start at this point. Do you have any concentrated shear force at this point? No. Then it starts in zero. Now, what is the total area? The total area is going to be this area minus this area plus this area. That's going to be. So, what is the total area in the triangle? The total area in the triangle is 4 times 15 divided by 2, and it's negative. This is the area of the triangle plus the area of this rectangle, like that which is 2 times 15. This is 30, this is 30, the total is going to be 0. That means that for the shear we're going to start in 0 and we're going to end in 0. Now one more time, here it is important that you do a summation point to point of the beginning and, and the end of the, of, the vid, of the loads. So if you work with this load at the beginning, the, you're going to have positive 2 from the rectangular load and 0 from the triangular distributed load. That means that your load at the beginning, the total load coming from the superimposed load or superposition of both loads, here is going to be positive 2. Positive 2 is here, positive 2. Now at the other end, the total load from the triangle is negative 4. Negative because it comes down, it's com it comes down and 4 because it's 4, the magnitude of the load, and the rectangular load is positive 2, so this value is going to be negative 2. That means that this value here is negative 2. Now, because this is constant and this is a triangle, this is going to be a straight line. That's what's going to happen there, a straight line. And the total distance from here to here is 15, and if this is 2 and this is negative 2, they're going to intersect at exactly half. So that means that this is positive, and this is going to be negative which you can put like that or you can represent the load if you don't want to represent it like that you could also represent the load in this way but it's the same thing like that and like that it's the same this and this is exactly the same situation now once you know this goes to s from zero and ends in zero the only thing that you have to know is the circle again please don't neglect infants, neglect, dump, people, instead. That's the circle. Now I want to know what is the shape on the shear. I look at the load. This is the load. Positive decreasing or positive decreasing is the same. Positive decreasing is like that. I go positive decreasing like that. Now this other one is negative increasing or this one is negative increasing. You can see it from there. So negative increasing is going to be like that that you know you want to know how much is the value there well no problem you know this is 7.5 this is 7.5 and this is 2 which is this part here what is the area of that uh, triangle 2 times 7.5 divided by 2 2 times 7.5 divided by 2 that's this area and it's positive area that means that we start from 0 plus 7.5 we reach this point now you want to check if it's correct, no problem. What is this area? Negative because the arrows are coming down and the area what it is? 7.5 times 2, because this is 2, divided by 2. That means 0. That means that from here, 7.5 and you reach 0. Done. Share diagram completed. Now moment. You want to do the moment by area? No problem. Let's do the moment by area. We need to know how it goes from here to here. I know that I have this moment 75 here, but I, I don't even want to use that moment for the time being. I want to work with the area. This is a positive area and this is a positive area also. 
Now, I have to know how to calculate the area of the parabola. How do you calculate the area of the parabola? Remember, I told you that before. I'm just going to repeat it again. The area of the parabola is if you have this parabola, like that. This parabola, and this is B and this is H. This part of the parabola, this area, is going to be 2 thirds of B times H, and this is going to be 1 third of B times H. Now, this parabola here is like this one. So 2 thirds of B times H. What is B? 7.5. What is H in this case? 7.5. That means that if I'm doing moment first at all, I start from this point. Do you have any concentrated moment there? No, it starts from zero. Now, plus, what is the area of this parabola? 2 thirds of the base times the height, which in this case coincides and it's the same value, but remember this is B and this is H, and that comes from this. When we do the multiplication, you have 7.5 times 7.5 times 2 divided by 3, 37.5. That's the value for that parabola, 37.5. So this value here should be 37.5. And this is how? This is positive because it's positive, it's plotted above the axis, and it's increasing because the height is increasing. Positive increasing is like this. That means that from this point, I'm going to go to that point in that way. Remember this value we just calculated, and it was 37.5. Now, once I'm here in this value, I have to add this other area, this other area here. What is this other area? Well, it's the same area, but it's flipped to the other side. Now I say 37.5 plus this other area, but remember now the area is like that. But it's the same area. This is 7.5, this is 7.5, 2 thirds of base, 7.5, times high, 7.5, and that's 37.5 also, plus 37.5 is 75. So that means that I'm going to reach this point here of 75. Now this shape is positive because it's plotted above the axis, and it's decreasing because the height, the height of the, of the curve the height of the curve is getting smaller. Positive decreasing is like that. That means that from this point, I'm going to reach 75 in that way, like that. Once I reach this point, remember, you go here to this convention, and this is the same convention that we have. We say that, uh, remember, this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative, and in this case, I find this moment, and that moment is negative. I have a positive value of 75 and I find a negative value of 75, that means that the moment is going to jump back to zero and it's going to end as it should. This is the easiest way of going if you know how to use the method of the areas. This completes the series of videos for this problem. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, remember in the two previous videos, this value was inverted. That was just an error sign, but it didn't affect the final results so the final result is correct i hope that you enjoy it see you next time keep watching videos and if you want another one i don't know i did this for one student that asked me you can ask me if i think that is important for you i will record a video regarding that have a nice day